morning, everybody. If you were asleep, you are now awake. Amen? Amen. Well, we have lots of announcements, so let's, let's get those rolling and get those out of the way. I'd like to do that first so that we can have our undivided attention on worship. So, we have slides. Let's see. Bible studies. Tuesday morning, Thursday night. You can write those down. You can show up. You are more than welcome at any of those times, at any of those meetings. Uh, I think it's important for us to be in fellowship together, but I love purposeful fellowship, meaning we come together, we fellowship, but we also talk about the Word of God. So those are two Bible studies that you can attend. Food pantry. If you know anybody that is in need of food assistance, they can come here every Wednesday, drive through pickup for right now from 4 to 5 p.m. every Wednesday. No one gets turned away. Um, so if you have people that need assistance, please send them. It's discreet. Nobody has to know you even drove through except for the people giving you the food. So 4 to 5 every Wednesday. Anniversary service is today at 3. I would love it if you would all be there. Um, we've put together a very uh, thoughtful service to um, honor this place of worship that has been there for many, 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 many years. Many, like 200 plus years. And it's a beautiful thing to be able to go back to historic sites like that where saints of old have worshiped and worshiped there as well. So I hope you will join us today at 3. Next Sunday is World Communion Sunday. It will be the first time that we have all had communion here in a very, very long time, uh, pre-COVID and before, so I'm told. So it will be a beautiful time of worship and sharing communion together. I'm going to warn you in advance, it is not going to look the way communion always looked. We gotta do things a little different, but that's okay. Because here's the deal, the Holy Spirit works no matter how we do it, right? So we're going to partake in communion together. There is a women's luncheon. If Donna has more to add to this, you may feel free. That will be Sunday, October 18th. That will happen immediately after service around 10, uh, 1030. What? 1230. 1230. Here it is a bag lady lunch, which means you are bringing your own bag lunch, but desserts and drinks will be provided by us. What else? RSVP to me, right? Yes, you can RSVP to Donna. Donna, wave, raise your hand, wave for people that don't know you. Yeah, I can. <laughs> you never know. Uh, there will be a program and a project. So what you need to do is bring anything that you are looking, anything good that you are looking to dispose of. Note cards, candles, flowers, all that sort of stuff. Uh, dish towels, anything like that that you would like to bring and you never know sometimes your things that you want to discard your trash may be a beautiful treasure to somebody else and that will be part of our program so be thinking, be creative and we're going to have, as Donna put it, a trashy good time I think that's hilarious and it will be a good time and that is all we have so with all that stuff out of the way, I would love it if you would stand with us this morning as we take this time to center our heads and our hearts to worship the Lord together with our call to worship, our words of gathering. Awaken from your sleep, for night is gone. Salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. Then let us lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Come, Come and let us worship God together. Amen. If you can remain standing, we are going to go to the Lord in song this morning. This is just one way that we worship the Lord. Just one way. So if you would like, the words will be on the screen. This song may be familiar to you. It may not be. The chorus is very simple. It just says, my redeemer lives. So if you can't catch on to the verses, you will certainly catch on to the chorus. Let's sing this morning.
We are going to move right into our children's message. All right, little ladies, it's all you. <laughs> Come on down. It's awesome. Aren't you excited? Let's see the eye roll. There it goes. Yeah. I know. I know. It's so different. Okay, I have a question. Do you like Chinese food? No. No. Well, Katie said yes first, and then she saw you say no, and then she said no. Do you like, do you ever get Chinese food? No. No? No try. Okay, all right. Well, that's all right. One thing that's really, really cool that, and there are some places that you can go down different streets and you could get food from India, you could get Indian food, Chinese food, American food, all sorts of food. But one thing that I really like, we just had Chinese food last night. And it's different, right? It's different than anything that I could cook or whatever. But do you know what they give you? at the end of your meal, whether you do takeout or whether you eat at a Chinese restaurant. Do you know what they give you? Does anybody know? Fortune cookies. Fortune cookies. And guess what I brought you? Have you ever seen these? Fortune cookies. There you go. All right, so I have never I have never seen anyone open up a fortune cookie and just take a bite out of it. Do you know why? Have you ever seen a fortune cookie before? Yeah, right? What do you do? What do you do with it? Okay, go ahead. You want to open them up? Go ahead. This ought to be good. I don't know. What do you think? All right, so what do you do? You open it up. Can you get it? Yep. All right, Trisha's got it. All right. So what's inside your cookie? A white paper. All right. Do you want to try and read what's on there? This is called your fortune. And some people, what? Yeah, you can open it. Go ahead. So what you do is you hold the two sides and you break it open like that. Yep, yep, yep. All right, there you go. And look what's inside. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, the struggle is real, people. It's real. Okay. So, okay. So, Trisha, can you help her out? What's it say? Bring your mask down a tiny bit. I'm a lip reader. Go ahead. What's it say? Uh, diversity of friends is a. Uh Credit to your flexible nature. That's deep. That's deep. Yeah. That's deep. All right. What's yours? What's your set? What's that yours, Trisha? Or was that? What's that your set? Uh, ask of my friends what they want, but use your own common sense. Use your own common sense. Mm-hmm. You want to try and read yours? No. You want me to read it? All right. You're gonna give it to Trisha. Okay. Go ahead. These are some deep fortunes, I'm telling you. All right, go ahead. Always do right. This will gravity some and the rest. All right, well, always do right, right? Okay, now, usually on the, uh, some fortune cookies on the other side, they'll give you numbers, like those are your lucky numbers. And, well, I don't know about you, but would you trust a piece of paper outside of a fortune cookie? I mean, would you live your life based on that, what that fortune cookie says? Some people might, you know what? But we have a God that we can put our full trust in. And there are people out there, whether they're fortune tellers, or maybe the people making the fortune cookies or whatever, and they'll put little things in the cookies or whatever, and they think that they know the future. But do they really know the future? Do they really know the future? Nope. 
Nope. Nobody knows the future except who? Nobody knows the future, adults, than who? God. God. That's right. And so we can fully put our trust in God. Now, wouldn't it be cool? Wouldn't it be cool if we could open up a fortune cookie? If we could open up a fortune cookie, right? And pull out our little white paper. This is what mine says. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Amen. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds my future, right? And your future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Just because he lives. Wouldn't that be awesome if we could pull that out of the fortune? Now that's, that's something to live by, right? Because he holds our future. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for being our one true person that we can go to. Lord, we do not have to fear anything because we know that you hold our future. We do not have to be worried. We know that you're already in our tomorrow and we're not even there yet, but you're already there. So we want to thank you. We thank you for the fun of fortune cookies, but we know that you hold our future. Amen. Amen. Okay, thanks guys. You want to take your fortune cookies back? You can if you want. They really are tasty. I will say that. All right. All right, and I just have one more thing. I'm butting in on your time. I'm sorry. Um, so every year, and I'm speaking as a Julie Sunday School Superintendent, um, every year we have what's called a book scholarship. Some years we can give it out and some years we can't just because there were no um, graduates that year. And this year is uh, very, very special. Um, we have two book scholarships that are going out and a little bit different. So the two recipients this year um, actually graduated a year ago and decided to get out into the workforce or just do a few other things, didn't necessarily go uh, to school. They had a year to kind of think about different things and think about what they really wanted to do. And our two recipients are both going to be attending, or actually they've been accepted, into the Ocean County College Veterinarian Technician Program. And so I, it is my hope that they are going to help each other out and not fight. But I don't know. What do you think, Kathy? So our two recipients are none other than our own Jeannie and Janie Emery. Yes. And they are not here with us because I'm, they're probably working. I talked to Janie the other day. And, um, but it was so very sweet. They both sent me very nice notes. Um, about they're very excited what they're going to be doing and I wanted to uh, not only am I going to be presenting it to Kathy this morning for the girls um, but I wanted to make you aware because I'd also like you as a congregation I'd like you to be praying for them because this is new and with any new adventure um, and new journey, we all need prayers. But this is something that I can't think of a better path for them because they both just absolutely love animals. Um, but just be in prayer for them. And, and I know we're gonna be enjoying hearing um, how they are doing throughout uh, their, their program. So I, with that, I am going to give Kathy uh, Jeannie and Janie's book scholarship on behalf of the New Egypt United Methodist Church Sunday School. There you go. Nine to four. On they're, they're starting. And there Thank you go. Nine. Thank you. I love fun interruptions like that. <laughs> this morning we are going to go to the Lord in prayer like we always do each Sunday. 
Uh, I will leave space for you to lift up names, as I always do, but we have um, a special thing we need to pray for this morning, a, a sad thing we need to pray for this morning. I was just informed that our wonderful, incredible, awesome secretary, Amy, uh, her boyfriend, Kenan, passed away uh, last night or the night before. I believe it was last night. Um, we need to, to lift her and Kenan's family in prayer. I can't imagine what that is like to lose a child young like that. Um, and I'm sure Amy is, is hurting incredibly. Um, so please keep that in your prayers this week as well as we'll lift him up this morning. Um, again, we need to continue to pray for our country. I cannot emphasize this enough. I just can't, I just can't say it enough. Um, I know that there was an incredibly well-attended gathering uh, at our nation's capital, uh, I believe yesterday, uh, praying for our country. I would love us to continue in that vein of prayer. And again, I'm going to continue to say it. No matter what side of the aisle you fall on, one of these men will win. One of them will win. And we need to be prayer for both of them. That they would have incredible, radical, Holy Spirit encounters. That they, if they have not already come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, and if they have, that they would bear the fruit of Jesus Christ. We need to be in prayer for the entourage of people that surround them, that influence them on a daily basis. Because again, I know... We often want to pray for who we think should win, because that's the easy way to pray, to pray who we think should win. We need to pray that the Lord would guide the hand of this election, that ballots would get to where they need to be, and that the right man for this position comes into authority. That is where we need to be praying, because church, it has been a year. It has been a year. And it probably won't get any easier. I don't care who's in office. This is the world we live in. It is the end times. We're going to talk about that a little bit today. We need to be diligently in prayer for all, all of our leaders and not just the ones we like. I'm preaching to me too. <laughs> so... Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. We will end with the Lord's prayer as we always do. And again, I will leave space if you have names of people you'd like to lift up. If you have praises that you would like to lift up, there will be space for that. Um, and I encourage you to, to do so. Let us pray. For a blessing and a praise, a blessing and a prayer for Carl Moore that God brought him right place at the right time and for continuing to you. Healing for my friends with cancer. The Vanour Scale family. For Irene Inman. Good and gracious God, we come before you this morning with our joys and our sorrows, but God, we first and foremost lift up praise to you because you are holy and you are awesome and you are righteous. And Lord, we know that you are just and sovereign. And Lord, we praise you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, all that you are going to continue to do in us, in this church, in this town, in this state, in this nation, God, and in this world. Lord, we, we give over what we want to you, and we ask that you would give us your desires. Lord, this morning, there are many families dealing with many things, from sickness to uh, just regular old sickness to cancer to, to death this morning, God. Lord, we lift up these families to you. We lift up Amy and Kenneth's family today. God, we ask that you would be with them, that even though there may be sorrow, God, that they would find
find joy in you, that they would find peace in you, that they would find hope in you, God, even when all may seem hopeless at the moment. God, we thank you for, for Kenan's life and for the mark that he made on this earth. Lord, we come to you this morning with those dealing with cancer, for families dealing with cancer. God, we know that disease is not from you. God, that we live in a fallen world where we rapidly deteriorate, and cancer is just one of those hard things that we have to deal with. God, we ask you this morning to bring healing and wholeness to those situations. Lord, we come to you this morning on the heels of a major prayer vigil in our capital. And we come to you this morning and we ask that your hand would be upon this election. God, we, we talked about weeks ago how you, you appoint governments and you can use anyone. So God, we just ask this morning that whoever falls into that, that headship of our country, God, that they would have a heart that seeks after you. Lord, that each of these men, President Trump and former Vice President Biden, God, that you would radically encounter them. Lord, just like you encountered Saul on the road to Damascus, God, we ask that you encounter these two men, whether whether which one wins or not, Lord, their souls are far more important than any election. And God, we lift those men to you and their families. God, and the entourage of people that surround them, that if they have not already, that they would come to a saving knowledge of you. God, so many times we get hung up on the issues that we forget that these are living, breathing souls that will one day answer to you. And God, we ask that you would encounter them, that your Holy Spirit would move through them, God, and that each would bear good fruit. God, we, we come to you at the end of an incredibly crazy year. Lord, and it's not over yet. Lord, we pray not only for them, but for us, God, that, that we would radically encounter you as well. God, that we would leave this place different than when we walked in. Lord, that we would look far more like you and a lot less like us. God, we thank you for the things that you have done in each of our lives and in this place. And Lord, we humbly come before you and we pray that prayer that you first taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. If you could stand with us again this morning as we continue with that attitude of prayer, as we sing, I am thine, O Lord.
You can be seated this morning. Our scripture reading this morning is from the book of Romans, chapter 13, verses 11 to 14. May God's blessing be on the reading and hearing of these words. And do this, understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake from your slumber, because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over and the day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not carousing and in drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, friends, our four-week journey of Renew is coming to a close. And I hope that you've all enjoyed kind of roaming through Romans with me. So I'd like to give us a quick recap of what we've done over the last four weeks. Week one, we talked about the process of renewing and what that means. That the requirement is no longer these ritual animal sacrifices, but instead it is the presentation of us, the living person, a living sacrifice, a life dedicated to the service of God, a life committed to doing God's will, a life lived in faith, lived out in faithfulness, a life of transforming rather than conforming to the world, a life of perfection, and I don't mean to be perfect, I mean to be perfected, because that is certainly a process that takes a lifetime. Week two, we talked about how renewing people engage with each other and with the government, what it really means to be subject to the governing authorities, and how when it says that God appoints or establishes authority, it's really talking about how God can use anyone in power, and I do mean anyone. Last week, we talked about how renewed people engage with each other and with the rest of the world. Renewed people are filled with care and concern for others. They bear one another up rather than just putting up with them. My husband gave me the perfect example of like a load-bearing wall in a house. What happens when you knock out a load-bearing wall? A whole house goes down, right? That is what we need to be for each other. We are all houses of Christ. And we need to bear one another up. Because when we don't, what happens? If one of us falls, we all fall. Renewed people are filled with the example of Jesus Christ. And they always put others first. Because that is what Jesus has done and has always done. And will continue to do. Today we are looking at Romans 13, verse 11 to 14. I know that doesn't seem like a lot. So we're going to break it down a little bit. It says, verse 11 to 14, And do this understanding the present time. And do this. He's talking about everything he's now told them from chapter 1 all the way through chapter 12. Do all these things, presenting yourselves as living sacrifices and such. Because the hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber. Because salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over and the day is almost here. So let us put aside deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. The schedule of day and night drastically controlled the world of Paul's day. With no artificial light like we have, firelight, feeble by our modern standards, was all that stood between people and darkness. Most work stopped as soon as the sun went down and started again when the sun rose. Paul is urging Christians to see in this spiritual metaphor that the sun is about to rise, and it is time to get up. Church, I don't know about you, but the world seems like it is moving very fast to me, faster than I remember even as a kid. I know they say that as you get older that happens, but I don't know. We seem to be moving awfully fast. 
And we can't get so absorbed and exhausted taking care of these every day-to-day -day obligations that we lose track of time and doze off and become oblivious to God and all that he is doing. We must stay in a state of renewing, day by day, hour by hour, and if you're anything like me, sometimes it is simply minute by minute. So what is Paul talking about when he's talking about the sun is rising? Paul describes that moment as one in which salvation is closer now than when, for, than when his readers first trusted in Christ. Does this mean that Paul thought Christians weren't being saved? No. He's simply referring to salvation in the sense that all who are in Christ will reach eternity. And that time of ultimate victory and judgment is fast approaching. Paul believed Jesus was coming back at any time. And so do we. And I know that it has been 2,000 plus years later, and we are still waiting and looking forward to it. And I cannot say enough that every day the Lord tarries is another day of his mercy and grace to draw others to him. That is why he waits. And that is why we, who call ourselves Christians, need to be renewed and continue renewing because we may be the only Jesus people see. We may be it. And if we're walking around looking like everybody else not renewed, how then will they know? He tells us to behave decently as in the daytime, not carousing in drunkenness, Sexual immorality, debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Now, some of you are sitting here and saying, well, I don't carouse, I'm not drunk, and I don't give in to immorality or debauchery. Well, amen, I hope you don't. However, however, it's real easy to look at that and go, see, I don't do that. We're forgetting the other two, dissension, jealousy. If you read further back through Romans, he talks about gossip and slander and a whole bunch of other things that I hate to inform us we all do a lot. We do. Just because some sin is easy to recognize doesn't mean it's any less a sin to God as dissension and jealousy. Church, the enemy is out to divide. That is what he is in the business of doing. He divides families. He divides churches. He divides nations against nations. That's what he does. So we need to stay renewed so that we don't give in to this nonsense of being jealous of one another or bringing dissension or gossiping or slandering each other. Again, how will the world know if we behave just like them? Again, I say the world is speeding up. There's rumors of wars, there's wars, there's natural disasters. We have seen a global pandemic, which is something I don't think any of us have seen in our lifetime. One day Jesus will return, and we don't know the day nor the hour, so it is important, I'll say it again, to stay renewed, laying aside all the sin that so easily entangles us, no matter, no matter how big or small it looks, it's all the same to Jesus. Ultimately, renewing people, as Paul puts it, clothe themselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. They put on the armor of light. If you move over to Ephesians, you can see the whole armor of God. Helmets of salvation, swords of the spirit, shields of faith, shoes of the gospel of peace. And we look at those things as little individual things, but really, they all point to Jesus Christ. He is the only way to salvation. He is the only truth. He is the sword of the spirit, the word of God. It says in John, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All those things point to Christ. So if we want to be clothed in the armor of light, then we better be clothed in Jesus Christ. I say we. This isn't a finger-pointing sermon, because I got many pointing back at me. I need to be clothed in Jesus, too. And you know what? I don't always look like him either. But we have to try. We have to submit ourselves and our will over to Christ and not gratify these things of the flesh. We must look like Christ. I want to take a little bit of time and talk to you about our next 
sermon series. I had originally planned this sermon series to be in January because I thought it would be a great way to start the year. The next seven weeks, we're going to do a study called Binging the Bible. I don't know about you, but in the last six months, I have uh, binged many things, uh, including Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, and all the social media outlets I can possibly consume because being home with not a whole lot to do leaves plenty of time to run through series after series and movie after movie. I know binge had a, had, has had a different connotation in years past about going on a binge, but now we use it as a way to describe uh, watching consecutive shows over and over and over. But my question is, when's the last time we binged the Bible? So this seven week study is going to focus on how God reveals his will and his desires for humankind through each specific section of the Bible. Because I don't know if you know this, but while they are all individual books, it is one unfolding story from Genesis to Revelation. Each genre Pentateuch, historical books, wisdom literature, prophets, gospels, epistles, apocalyptic literature, all provide a unique and special way that God has communicated through history. And all of those things point directly to Jesus Christ. So, I feel like this series will be a great way for help to help us dig into the library of the Bible and help us understand its beauty and its relevance for today. And it will also be a way for us to keep renewing. Because the only way to look like Christ is to know about him. Amen? So, the ways we get to know him are the Bible and through prayer. So, this series is going to come with a challenge. I don't know how many of you will want to partake with me. But I am certainly going to try again. I have tried this challenge many times. And many times I have failed. Um, I had heard a story many, many years ago from, uh, it was at a women's retreat, and the woman speaking told the story about being uh, on a mission trip in another country, I think it was Peru, and she was speaking with uh, a man there. I don't know if he was a pastor or not, I want to say he was, and he was, he came to her crying that he had only read the Bible once, and she said to him, oh, I like, it's okay. Not everybody reads the Bible all the way through all the time. Like, it's all right. Like, one time is great. You know, you just keep, you just keep plugging away at it. And he goes, no, 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 no. I mean this month. I've only read it one time this month. And she was kind of taken back, like, wow, what kind of Christian am I? I'm here trying to preach to this man, and he reads the Bible once a month from cover to cover. Now, that is not to make anybody feel bad. I have never read the Bible in a month. However, this woman did a little research and realized that you can read the Bible in 90 days by only reading maybe 10 to 12 pages a day. Now, when we think about, if you're anything like me, how often we scroll through our phone or read news articles on the internet or watch TV, um, I'm sure 40 minutes of Bible reading probably doesn't compare. If I looked at my screen time on my phone right now, I think I'd be embarrassed to share it with you. <laughs> he knows, it's true. It's a horrible habit. So I'm asking, I'm challenging myself as well as all of you, to commit to read the Bible over the next 90 days. And again, I thought we were going to originally do this series in January. It would be a great way to start January. We'll start January 1st. It'll be a cool New Year's resolution, and the Holy Spirit has a good sense of humor. And he went, huh, no, we're not doing that. Because why do we need to wait till January to be renewed people? If that's what we're talking about all this time, why not start now? And again, I say, the Holy Spirit, he's a funny guy. Because I looked at the calendar to see what would happen, what, what's 90 days from October 1st. And where does it end? December 30th. Right before New Year's. That's with two grace days. If you want to give yourself a third grace day, you'll end on the 31st right in time for New Year's. Friends, God's timing is, is perfect. 
Now, some of you are saying, I don't think I can read that much. It's all right. I have a plan for those of you that think you can't read that much. Uh, and I need to explain something, too, about this challenge. We are simply reading. You don't have to, like, study every word. You can save that for a different time of, of study. If you're reading through these chapters and something strikes you, write it down. Take time later and read over that. This is simply for us to get the whole Bible in a, in a short amount of time. And guess what? The Holy Spirit is good. He'll help you retain what you need to retain. So, that being said, I looked up, like the first day, I believe, if you have your papers in front of you, I think it's Genesis 1 to Genesis 16. So I looked up on my Bible app. If you have apps on your phone, you can look up Version. They actually have a 90-day program in the Version Bible app. Um, however, you can also listen to the Bible. I am not opposed to you listening to it. It can get in there all the ways. Sometimes when I do this challenge, and like I said, I have gotten sidetracked many times, I'll listen and read because it makes it go a little faster and it helps me retain a little better to hear it and see it. Um, again, I listened. I listened through 1 to 16 and checked how long each chapter for someone reading it is. It's about three minutes a chapter. It's really not that much. Um, and again, it depends on the length of the chapters. But total, from Genesis 1 to 16, which is the first day, was about 45-ish minutes to listen through it. So if you have a long drive to work, you're cooking dinner for your family, stick it on your counter and let it roll. Let it hit your spirit. It's okay. I'm not asking you to retain 66 books of the Bible. We're just going to take some time to hear all the stories. And again, if something catches your attention, write it down. I personally feel that the next few months leading into 2021 are going to be pivotal, not just for the country, but for the church. We need to stay connected to the vine. We need to keep renewing and transforming. And one of the best ways to do that is by staying in God's word. So when you came in, I hope you picked up a reading plan. If you did not, you can get one on your way out. We have them. There are plenty. I want to end this year better than we started it. And I think the best way to do that is by doing it together. I believe there's something to be said when the church does things in unity and does them together. God moves. He just does. He honors his people when they worship him. So I want us to be ready for whatever's coming. And I feel like this is, this is a good way for us to do that. And I hope that you will partake in this journey. It's simply an opportunity. I'm not going to twist anybody's arm. You don't have to if you don't want to. But I would love it if we did this together. Because we don't know the day or the hour. Amen? Amen. Amen. So friends, it is that time where we pray for our tithes and offerings. I would love it if you would stand with me as we do that. Again, giving is always has always been between you and the Lord, and now it really is because we're not passing a plate. Nobody's watching. And if they were watching before, they shouldn't have been. So there's boxes on each wall for you to give of your tithe and your offering as you see fit. You can also give online via PayPal. The link to that is on our Facebook page or it is simply, uh, I believe, paypal.me slash New Egypt UMC. So you can simply go there and find that as well. Let us pray. Great God of abundance, we thank you for your blessings on each of us in this church, Lord. And we know that when you bless us, you ask us to give it back, to bless others with it. So, Lord, we thank you for the ability to be able to do that. And, Lord, we come before you as always and we ask for wisdom and how we use these gifts for your good and your glory. Because, God, we want it to be all about you and nothing about us. Lord, all the good we can do will never save someone's soul. God, only you can do that. 
Lord, and we know that you give us these gifts to enhance ministry and to be able to do that more effectively. So God, we just continue to ask for your wisdom as we move forward in ministry here. God, we thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And may we look more like him and a lot less like us. Amen? Amen. 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 I will see you all out front. Have a blessed week, everybody.